Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk to the non-traditional applicant in medicine and answer the question whether or not it's ever too late to begin a career in it. Stay tuned. So, you're a non-traditional applicant. So was I. I began my medical school career at the age of 26. Actually, that was the year I was turning 26. So I walked through the door at 25. Most of my colleagues had gone straight through and had finished their undergraduate education months before beginning medical school. So they were mostly around age 21 or 22. So already I was three years older than my colleagues. So let's back it up. How did all that happen? So between my undergraduation and my entrance to medical school, I actually was a high school science teacher. I taught in a public high school in Queens, New York, and um, I did teach for about three years, general science, chemistry, and I did a little bit of earth science as well. But for the most part, during that whole time that I was teaching, I always had the goal in mind that I was going to medicine and enter medical school. So even though I was working in that sector, in the education sector, I was still taking pre-med courses and making moves to get toward the goal of entering medical school and getting in. So how does this apply to you as the non-traditional applicant? I've been seeing very frequently in the comments that people are asking about different life experiences and maybe entering medical school at later stages in life you know, older ages than let's say the 22 year old or even the 25 year old. And so this is all very commonly seen and actually I think would make for a more respectable, well-rounded applicant on interview day. So in my experience, when I did my three years outside of being a student, I felt like that really made my application more uh, reliable as far as me being a dependable, mature applicant, someone who is strong and able to multitask. So admissions officers and admissions committees are looking for applicants that are well-rounded, people who are mature and able to handle the pressures of medical school. So if you lived in the real world and you, sh you demonstrated that by being able to hold a job, if you have a family, if you had other careers before medicine, if you were able to do all of those things, that really shows the admissions committee someone who's able to balance. And so in medicine, that's the most important thing that you have to do on a daily basis, is balance the needs of your patient and multiple patients and the different issues that might come up with them. And also be able to commit to the time that it's gonna take you to go through medical school or any other professional training within the healthcare field. So I think that being a non-traditional applicant is never a negative, but it's just what you're doing with the time that you're outside of being a trainee or a student that really matters. So you have to think about that when you're doing your applications for medical school and consider whether or not it's something that you would be able to demonstrate on interview day. So you have to look at your experiences as a non-traditional applicant as a way to give yourself a leg up. So when you're out there in the world and you're living everyday life and you're doing, you're balancing all your responsibilities for your career, it really does help you. Some people might think a non-traditional applicant going in at a later age, let's say you're already 30, 35, even 40. Some people might consider that as a disadvantage, but it really is not. I would say that your responsibilities on a day-to-day -day basis, for example, if you're juggling your job and you have kids, you have to manage your home, other things that are going on, bills, and you know, just being an adult. It's something that is very much admirable in the eyes of people who are looking at your application as a demonstration of you being able to manage responsibilities and get everything done and also study. You know, you're taking the same pre-med courses that someone who doesn't have any of those responsibilities are taking. You know, someone who's just going straight through, who doesn't really have any of the responsibilities and is just basically a student. You know, you doing the same courses as them and getting the same grades is a demonstration of your strength and your ability to multitask and manage a lot of things at once and do it well. So I think that that's very, very impressive and it really could only weigh in your favor. So as an applicant, you have to strongly demonstrate your passion and your reason why you're entering medicine because that's something the admission committee is really looking for when they're looking at your application. They're going to go through your application with a fine tooth comb looking for the reason why you decided at this point in life to change careers fully 
uproot your whole situation and start being a physician, going through, start being a student again, going through all the processes that it entails to train to become a medical doctor, CRNA, a nurse, anything in the healthcare field that you're trying to enter into. As you all know, all of these positions are very competitive, and so we're looking at a field that's very limited in number, so you have to really demonstrate yourself as someone who's committed to the process, is willing to do everything it takes to be successful, and someone who's going to be through to the end, who's not gonna drop off in the middle or give up halfway through the process. So, with all that being said, I wanna encourage you guys that are non-traditional applicants, no, there's never an age that's too old to go into medicine. This is something that is based on you and your strong desire and your strong passion, your strong commitment to the field, and your knowledge of how much work it's gonna take the effort you're gonna to have to put in and the time and sacrifice that you're gonna to have to put on the line as well. So when I was going through my journey, I actually found out there were quite a few people who were already attendings and you know practicing for years that had done careers before then. Um, I know specifically one of my attendings was an engineer before going to medical school and he did so for about 10 years. So I think he entered medical school when he was 35. One of my good classmates was a lawyer before going into medicine and she practiced for two years. So you really have to think about about, you know all those kind of examples of people who have done other careers and have successfully gone through it and they are able to say that now you know they've found the career that was really meant for them so this is something that if you really want it you should push for it no matter what's going on with your life at this moment if this is your passion you can always make your dream come to reality so there are other alternative careers to pursue in medicine that could be great for you and will actually help you feel just as fulfilled and as give you the lifestyle that you've always wanted to have and the balance that you've always wanted to have. So in my last video, I spoke about the time it takes to become a nurse anesthetist and also an anesthesiologist assistant. So both of those tracks are a quicker way of getting into medicine and can allow you to pursue anesthesia as well. And for the non-traditional applicants that are pursuing nursing, you definitely wanna be in the same mindset. It doesn't really matter how old you are, going into nursing, going into any field in medicine, what really matters is your commitment to the process and your willingness to go through all of the steps that it takes in training and examinations and clinicals to get there. So that's what everyone in the admissions committee is looking for. Someone who is going to demonstrate a commitment to the whole process and actually show that they're really passionate about it. You know, medicine is challenging and it always takes a long time to get to your goal, no matter you know what area you're going to go into it takes a lot of commitment and it takes a lot of effort so i entered medical school without any kids but actually as a fourth year medical student i already started working on my family so i had my firstborn as a fourth year right before interviews so i was able to experience the joys of that you know traveling around the country and going on interviews and having to worry about you know a small baby i had to leave her with my family members and things like that so you know that's something that a lot of my class classmates didn't really have the pleasure to experience, but made me, you know, a different candidate. Someone who's experiencing real life things, you know, a little bit earlier than most. And then as far as my second born, she was born while I was a resident, um, an intern actually. And I went through the rest of my residency training with two kids and having to balance everything, take my exams and everything with both of them in tow. So here's my second born. Oh, yes, I was definitely the littler sister. <laughs> this is Micah, who's now eight years old. Well, she'll be eight in the summer, a couple yeah. months from now. So she's no, seven. one month from now. Right, that's true. May. It's pretty much May. So in June, she's going to be eight. And so, you know, we've been through the whole process together. Like when, from when she was a baby, you know, I was going through all of my residency training. And now she's this grown up big girl and she's doing everything she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everything I want to. Yeah, so I say all that to say that in this whole process of pursuing a career in medicine and being a professional, you want to consider your whole lifestyle, your goals for life, and you know, being able to keep all of that in mind as a motivation to help you push forward. So this is something that if you're able to just put forth your best and really, really, really commit yourself to the whole process, you'll be able to come out with the reward of attaining that title, that position, and 
ultimately the happiness that you're looking for. So with that, I thank you guys so much for watching. I really want to encourage you all to continue pursuing your dreams in medicine and beyond. And of course, stay safe and please comment below with what you would like to see next. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care of yourself. Bye.